Hey YouTube, in this episode we're going to be reattaching the 240Z to the rotisserie and then once we get that done we're going to pull the suspension back off and pull the wheels off and pull the fender flares off and get ready to finish the bodywork on it. So let's get right into it. All right, I'll be back once I get this attached. All right, we got the rear connected. Right there. Put the, the bolts through the bumper mounts that way, and then I threaded the nuts on and tightened them all the way down. And then I went back and tightened these two right here and the back is all attached now so let's move on to the front all right guys so uh, we're set up at the front these go through the rotisserie and they go through the frame rail I have to jack up the front of the car a little bit because this is as low as this goes and it's still a little bit higher than the car even with it on the wheel dollies so I'll get the jack under it, I'll jack it up, I'll push this underneath, put all these through, tighten them down, lift it up, remove the jack, remove all the wheel dollies, and then it will be in the air. And then we just have a couple pieces of the rotisserie that connect the front and rear sections of the rotisserie together to make sure they're in line and to make sure that they don't flex or anything. So let's get to it. We got those bolts in. I'm going to tighten them down and I'll be right back. Alright guys, so as you can see, the front is off the ground. The wheel dolly is just still sitting underneath there. The rear is pretty much off the ground. Just gotta level everything out. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go back and forth and adjust the this up and down to get the car centered. Well, actually I can't do that yet. I have to take the suspension off. I'm going to raise it up a little bit so there's room to take the suspension off. I'm going to pull the suspension off and then we will center the car vertically on the rotisserie. So I'm going to jack up the back. There's one fender flare. I only put this side on and it was really just to uh, see how it looks. Alright, let's start by taking the wheels off. So we got that done. I'll pull the I'll pull the other side wheels off quick off camera because it's too much of a hassle to put the camera on the other side because there's not a lot of room. And then we'll be back and I'll show you guys how to pull the suspension off. All right, guys. So I got all the wheels off. Brought those to the uh, parts room. I'll show you guys that at some point. But wild dingo. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, 
I'm gonna show you guys how to take the uh, suspension off a of 240Z. This is aftermarket suspension from Technotoy Tuning, but it's very similar for stock as well. Uh, for stock, you will have a spindle pin right here. There will be a set screw in the middle, and that will stop the spindle pin from being removable, but it will also stop it from rotating. So it's best to leave that set screw in when you take the nuts off, and then once you get the nuts off, remove the set screw and as the manual says, just pull the spindle pin out, which is a joke for most cars. Uh, these were relatively easy, which I still had to use an air hammer to get them out. Most people, they have to like get a 20 ton press to get them out, but uh, Technotoy tuning upgrades to a 5 8 and I think it's a 11 inch long bolt. That makes it a lot easier because there's no set screw in the middle and it's a bolt so you can rotate it easily. But, so I'll, I'll pull this out and then I'll, we'll go up top and I'll show you guys how to do the rest of it. So this is what Techno Toy Tuning uses. It's like, like I said, it's a bolt. I believe it's 11 inches long, 5 8 diameter. And then these, the ends are 23 millimeter. So now that we have this out, this is free to move around. And we'll go up top and I'll show you guys how to get the rest of it off. So right in here, this is a Techno Toy Tuning setup. Like I said, for a factory one, you will have three nuts. Those three nuts are the only thing I hold in. The center one just holds the strut to the top hat. For this, this is a little bit different, I believe, but for the, the center nut. But uh, for Techno Toy Tuning, there's four hex bolts. Uh, they're slotted, the, the top plates are slotted so that you have some amount of camber adjustability. So all I'm gonna do is I'll loosen all four of these and as I'm doing that, I will hold the strut to make sure it doesn't drop on the floor. And then we'll do the same thing there and the same thing right there and right there. For the bottom up front, it's almost the same. I'm gonna be leaving the control arm on. So I'll be taking out that bolt up there and having the whole front control arm attached still, as well as the TC rod, which is right. I can't, I can't get to it, but uh, it's the same thing. It's just a nut on the back of the TC rod and uh, bolt through the control arm. Uh, I'll leave this here as I pull the, the top bolts out and show you guys what it looks like. And there we go. That is a rear 240Z Techno Toy Tuning Strut with a Z31 Turbo Axle Flange welded to the stock flange and a wheel spacer. And then it's all drilled for five lug. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll finish up the rest of them and then I'll come back and show you guys how to pull these off. All right guys, so it's a little bit later. Got my hair cut, different shirt on. But anyway, got all the suspension off. I brought that to the parts room along with the wheels. So. Before we can take the, uh, this off, I want to be able to rotate the car. So let's finish putting the rotisserie together. Once we get that together, then we will rotate the car and I'll show you guys how to take the rear control arms and all that stuff off along with the uh, front subframe. So let's get right to it. So that's all tightened down. 
What that does is it stops the, the, uh, the two ends of the rotisserie from being able to twist independently of each other and for the bottoms to be able to pull away from each other because if the bottoms pull away from each other you might actually like twist your frame in half or in this case unibody but it should be safe to rotate now. I'm just going to take off the front right fender because the bottom's not bolted in so that way it's not hanging down and bending it. There we go. It's a little bottom heavy right now, but that's obviously because all this is still on it. Uh, I'm gonna either buy another one of these or sandblast and powder coat this one. The reason I didn't do that yet is there were actually some cracks in it on the top. So whoever had this car before was beating on it pretty good because the diff twisted enough to crank the mounts. But yeah, for the, this is the same as stock, uh, well, with the exception of the spindle pin, but at that point, I already explained that. The, this even uses the same size as stock and everything. And it's just two bolts. Don't remember what size they are. Let's see. Probably 24 millimeter. Yeah, 24 sounds about right. And that's why this doesn't work. Just loosen both of these. So there's four of these. One on each side of each of the control arms. So there's a part missing that goes right here that I don't have bolted on right now because I was just doing this as like a quick move in it. If you're driving the car, you definitely need that on there because these are able to flex away from each other and you might end up holding that. Um, yeah, so now we just take each of these bolts out on the factory cars. I believe these are just standard uh, bolts these are like the caps cap nuts or cap bolts whatever you want to call them hex normally you would have a bolt that goes through here which is the front diff mount and i don't have the diff in right now so there's no mount or there's no it's not attached So I don't know if you can see that, but uh, this was all cracked right here and right here. I grinded it down and welded it up. Hopefully it's strong enough, I'm not sure. I'll probably grind it flat. I think it'll be strong enough, but who knows. I might end up buying an another one anyway, just to be safe. It's magically staying there. But yeah, after you get those two off, it will likely just fall right off. But mine didn't for some reason. So for the T3 parts, they powder coat everything. So I actually had to sand this down a little bit to get it the diameter small enough for the prothane, polyurethane bushings to fit. Because otherwise it was really hard to get them on there. And you don't really want these to be binding. Uh, these come with lithium grease. I, I've heard of people using, actually, using this stuff. It's a uh, graphite, which is a better lubricant than, because it won't attract dirt and dust. So that's just an idea. I will be back after I get that one off. And then, I'll show you guys how to take the front subframe off. All right guys, so this is the last part of pulling the suspension off. There are four bolts, two on each side, right here and right here, and right here and right here. 
For the factory car, there will also be a plate on top, I believe. I don't have that installed right now. I will when I do the final assembly. But yeah, you just take these bolts out and the front subframe comes off. So let's do it. the front subframe. The steering rack goes through here, the engine mounts get attached to there, and this is where it attaches to the car. And that center plate is your jack point. And then your control arms get attached to here and here. So that's everything as far as the suspension goes. I think what we'll do is we will uh, put rib nuts in for the fender mounts because the factory front lower fender bolt locations are messed up to say the least. There's like broken bolts in them and stuff like that. So we'll drill new holes and put rib nuts in them and get bolts to hold the fenders on correctly. I will be back once I'm set up for that. All right guys, so the camera's set back up. Uh, these are the two lower front fender mounting points. As you can see, this one was already redrilled and tapped by the previous owner. The front one, I don't know if you can see that, but right here, the stock mounting location, a bolt broke off in it, and then it looks like they started the process of tabbing or of drilling a new hole and then tapping it, but they never finished it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in here I'm gonna finish drilling that hole, and then I will show you guys how to use a tap to give it threads so that it fits the stock size of bolt. So let's get right into it. So I'm gonna be using, uh, I believe they're carbide drill bits. They, they are designed specifically for metal so they don't wear down super fast. Anytime you're cutting metal with a drill bit, you wanna use some sort of oil, cutting oil is best. WD-40 works. You just spray a little bit of oil on it. You can spray on drill bit too, if you want. And then just go slow with the drill. So that's all done. We'll wipe it off. And then we'll use the right tap. This is an M8 uh, 125 thread pitch. Ah, you're not gonna be able to see that. And then this is just the tool to hold it. So generally when you start these, you want to uh, keep the tool as perfectly uh, lined up with the hole as possible. Start off slow. Once you get a few threads cut, Try to make sure you're not twisting the tool, like uh, changing the angle of it at all. Same thing, you wanna use oil. Again, cutting oil is the best, but WD-40 works. So I don't actually have metric drill bits. So I'm using the closest I have in standard, and it might just be a tiny bit too small. So I finished tapping that hole. As you can see, the, the bolt fits now. These aren't the bolts I'm gonna be using, these are just other bolts I had laying around. I have to order the correct size, but for test fitting and for painting and stuff, I'm gonna be using these to hold the fenders on. I have the right size for everywhere else, I just didn't realize that these were M8. The rest are M6 for the fenders on the 240Z. So, I think, Think that's everything we needed to do before paint so or before bodywork at least so I'm gonna bolt the fenders back on 
I'll set the car right side up and we'll see if there's anything else we need to do. And if not, in the next video, we will do all the bodywork and hopefully paint it. I think we're ready for bodywork. So if you guys like this video, hit the like button. If you like this channel, hit the subscribe button. Uh, we also have a Mustang on this channel. Steven just sent it out for its final inspection. I don't know. Let's see if we can get this finished and get to Pennsylvania. In the next episode, we will do bodywork and paint. And then it is a whole lot of bolting stuff together. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one.